you often wonder, what's the point of this? The stress, the drama, the constant going back to the drawing board to tweak your business model. And I can tell you many entrepreneurs say, you know what, it's not worth it. So I have a, um, a presentation as well, and I'll just run through it. The first question is, who am I? I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm also a mother and a wife, a Nigerian, a Christian, and um, someone who believes that life is short, so you have to make a difference. And one of the things that I committed to was basically to find value and impact wherever I can. Um, and about 10 years ago, God laid an idea in our hearts to start a company called Ace Foods. Some of you have heard of Ace Foods. I hope all of you have used that product. How many of you have used that product? If you haven't, you're missing, you're missing, you're missing. <laughs> anyway, so we started a company called Ace Foods. We actually applied for a business plan competition and won. And we're one of the uh, 14 finalists. And the company was really set up to do a couple of things. First to address the high rates of malnutrition in the country. When we started, it was 41% of our children were malnourished. That's one out of every three. And when you're malnourished, it affects brain development. The second reason was because 40 to 60% of fruits and vegetables go to waste. And uh, we just couldn't understand why we had such a high rate of waste. And then the third was that whenever I went to our grocery stores, I only saw imported products. And as a child, I remember eating made in Nigeria, proudly Nigerian products. And so we wanted to address this issue. So we started a company called Ace Foods. Now, when we started, and when we actually won the business plan competition, our first products were going to be jams. So we were going to create jams. And I like jam. My mother is American. I'm sure some of you have guessed. So I used to eat jam growing up in my fridge. And we used to have mango jam, pineapple jam, papaya jam, and there's even abalumo jam. In fact, abalumo jam, or we call it udala jam, is actually the best jam because it doesn't require pectin, and it's actually phenomenal. And I used to live in Senegal, actually. The idea for Ace Foods came when we lived in Senegal. And during our time in Senegal, there was bisap jam. Bisap is actually zobo. And you'd go to the hotels there, and you'd see all the array of little, little jars of jam. And so we won this business plan competition with actually creating these little jars of jam with, uh, you know, an Ankara on top and a ribbon, you know, saying this is what we could do. We can process our fruits and vegetables and go to waste. And so when we started Ace Foods with this, winning this business plan competition, our first products were jams. And then you can imagine what happened, right? First of all, it took us a year to get NAVDAC numbers. We invested in all the equipment for jam production. Um, and then we came to our average Nigerian with our pineapple, abalumo, mango, papa, or papaya jam. And they said, it's not red. <laughs> what type of jam is red now? Strawberry jam. Okay, where do you get strawberries in Nigeria? In Joss, but you know, they can't even fill a basket to produce jam. So the first thing is that all my, you know, 1% friends like who live in Banana loved the pineapple jam, right? We, in fact, were selling a lot of it in Quintessence and other places. The expatriates were so excited about these uh, products. But we wanted to create a product that would address the malnutrition challenges and support our farmers. So I wasn't creating a product for 0.05% of the population. So that was the first problem, is that there was no demand. So we said, okay, we'll have to create a red jam. That's what Nigerians want. So we came up with a mixed fruit jam that had pineapple, uh, oranges, and a range of other fruits, and a, a little red coloring, because watermelon, watermelon, which was now the basic component, is not a very bright color. I'm sure you've seen watermelon jam. It's not, I mean, watermelon juice is not very strong and potent. And then, so we took it around, and people said they like it, you know, but the price point was very, very high because we realized that most people who actually buy jam in Nigeria don't realize that the jam that's imported is actually flavored water with sugar. 
So when you start putting fruits into products, the cost of it basically goes up. But that wasn't even only the, the only problem. Jam is usually in glass jars. And in Nigeria, there are two major companies that produce glass. And they have orders for the next 10 years. Because their biggest customers are Nigerian breweries and Nigerian bottling company. So we went to visit them and they said, guys, if you're going to, we're going to take your order, we, you know, get a mold, but you have to at least commit to one million jars. And we could not commit to one million jars. So we started going to dump sites around Lagos to basically collect jars. And we were sterilizing them and recycling them. But then we completed all the dump sites and got all the jars that were possibly there. And there were no more jars available to us. <laughs> so then we started using plastics. But then when you use plastics, the shelf life is much shorter, between three to six months. So you can't get it very far and it's limited. The third challenge that we faced beyond the packaging was that when we wrote our business plan, sugar was 6,000 naira a bag. But as you know, in Nigeria, we have a monopolistic um, industry. So the sugar price went from 6,000 naira a bag to 12,000 naira a bag overnight. I even approached one of the monopolists to ask what happened. Because I've looked at the global prices. It has not doubled. It's gone up by 6%. Why is it doubling in Nigeria? But that's a story for another day. And then the, thir the fourth challenge was that after we looked at everything, we said, okay, maybe we can just do bulk and supply to, you know, the fast food companies that make donuts, the bakeries that make, uh, you know, have a layer of jam. But the challenge with all of them is that they said, you know, it has to be 2,000 naira per kg. So you can't use fruits. And we looked back to our mission and our vision and said, the time we start producing water and sugar and flavoring, how are we helping the agricultural sector? How are we improving the nutritional status of our people? If nothing else, we're actually killing our people. So, was it a fuck up? Yes. <laughs> I've never used that word. Or very, very rarely. Okay, so it was a product failure. One full year. One full year. Now, if you were me, would you close down the company? Maybe. It's tough, right? It's tough. You often wonder... What's the point of this? The stress, the drama, the constant going back to the drawing board to tweak your business model. And I can tell you many entrepreneurs say, you know what, it's not worth it. And at that time, my husband and I, who, you know, have gotten pretty decent education, decided to start this company. And what our salary was, at the, both of us was 50,000 naira. So we, were, we, we, we wrote a letter to ourselves, you know, with our salary, 50,000 naira, sweat equity for 50,000 naira. And we had children, so you can imagine. Very easy to go back to what you know. He's a finance guy. I'm a strategy person. Let's just forget this. It was a nice experiment, nice business plan competition. Move on. So what was the impact of it? Lost time. I mean, you spent a year trying to build something, obtaining an AVDAC number. Lost resources. You spent a lot of money on equipment, and then obviously wasted materials, labels, branding, etc. And packaging, because you actually do labels, you package, you buy everything in bulk. So what would we have done differently? The first thing is invest in robust market research. You know, I always tell people, your community of friends is not enough to tell you something will sell. Uh, winning a global business plan competition is not enough. You actually have to test the people in Mushi, Ajegunle, uh, Bariga, uh, Kanu. Do you understand? All over the country. Understand what their price point is, what their pain point is, and whether they're willing to. My dream was that all the women who carry bread on their head, when they carry mayonnaise and butter, they'll carry my jam. That was my dream, right? They're not carrying it today. The truth is, the reality is that this was not something that they were used to, and it was not something they were going to get used to anytime soon. Even those who have introduced new products like instant noodles, which used to be alien to us, it takes time to change mindsets about what is appropriate and what is useful. The second is stall large-scale investments. Stall NAVDAC, stall all these large-scale investments. Clearly, you can't sell in a supermarket without a NAVDAC number, but there are other ways to test the product without making the investments required because you really lose a lot when you do that. What next? So our year three strategy in our business plan was spices. And after year one went horribly wrong, we decided, you know what, we're going to start with spices. So we quickly became a spice company. Now we have adding new products to it. So today we actually have about 30 SKUs and 14 products in the market. And if you guys have never used the products, you're missing. 
Because we're in all the major supermarkets, we're in ShopRite, we're in Spa, we're in Ebano, we're in Globus, we're in all of them. And we now sell quite widely. And then we have our bean flour, our soya maize, which fights moderate malnutrition, which is a complete meal. And we're in 10 states. Uh, we export to the Netherlands and to the United States. Um, we have about 80 full-time employees. I don't work at the company full-time. I'm just a director. And we have all young people running the company, and they're doing a phenomenal job. And we've won quite a few awards, which I'm grateful for. We made it in Nigeria Product of the Year, et cetera, et cetera, by Ebony Life. So my big takeaway for you is this. I love this quote that says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Sorry, the, the words are a bit messed up. But that's a really important thing just to dwell on for a second. Because you can be successful. So Ace Foods is now winning awards. We can dwell on it and then one day miss the mark because you have to const constantly innovate. In fact, so many new people have entered the market. Every day we have new competition, right? Even some of the people we supply to. And we, if you think you haven't eaten Ace, if you eat many of the fast food companies, we actually supply in bulk in 25 kg bags to many of the fast food companies, many of the noodle companies, um, and quite a few of the people that you know, um, large multinationals, use us for their inputs. But many of them are now going into our space, right? And many of our suppliers are now going into our space. We work with 10,000 farmers. Some of our customers are saying, let's go directly to the farmer. So if you're not innovative and you're not cutting edge, you can become a failure, right? So it's really important that you don't dwell on it because success is not final. And that's very important. The second is failure is not fatal. If we had given up after that one year, many people said give up. This is not for you. You didn't study agriculture. You didn't study food technology. No quality control background. No microbiology background. I'm a business person. My husband is a business person. He's a finance person. I'm a strategy person. What are you doing in food? And a lot of people used to be very embarrassed that we have entered this space. After I had two degrees, he went to Harvard. I went to Harvard. Harvard Business School and you're selling, spice, you're selling jam. You know what I mean? So that mindset. So just keep in mind that success is not final and failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. Thank you very much.